All right, I believe we're now live. Did someone forget his live video? Uh, no, I didn't forget anything. This takes a minute to uh, get it set up. Let's see, let me set this to uh, live chat here. I've changed the settings up a little bit. There we go. CT Valley Rail Fan, hello. Star Dog Studios, welcome. BNSF 4971, welcome. Bob Ross 4449, hey, those are two good things, welcome. Rail Fan Ryan, hello. Hello. I see the layout's going well. Yeah, there's been some progress since the previous live stream. Uh, I've been working on a uh, shopping center and a bunch of other things. I'll get into that uh, when some more people uh, join in here, just so I don't have to do it several times. I found a cool train booth today at an antique store. Oh, that's really cool. It's always the best. Not very many antique stores I find carry a lot of model trains, so. You can find them. It's uh, it can be the deal. Hello from Cincinnati. Hey, somebody from Cincinnati. It's funny you say because I'm actually building a shopping center from Cincinnati, which I'll uh, get into a moment here. Uh, would you try to run a BL2 tonight? Thanks. Uh, I'll have a look through the collection. I, I don't actually remember where I've been storing the BL2s, but um, I'm sure there's one around. Auto model rail fan. How's it going? Welcome. If y'all got any snow up there, we got rocked in Minnesota this past week. Not really. Um, we had a bit of a dusting a few days ago, but uh, for the most part, it's all melted off. It's kind of an early season. Old train guy from Maine. Oh, good old Maine. I see another Cincy person in here. Hello from Brantford, Ontario. I've been watching your restoration videos. They help to figure out what, how to repair trains. I'm glad they help. Can you run two FP45s? I, I think we could probably throw one on here. I'd love an update on the O and, and Z scale layouts. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I've discussed this or not. Maybe uh, this was in the previous live stream, but in case I didn't, uh, got new storage facility here, got uh, two TV shelves. Um, this was all replaced last year, so the O scale layout is doing pretty well. Still need to wire it up to the controller because that's been lifted off the floor. Um, but yeah, the Z scale layout now has a better home. The N scale layout has a better home. As for the G-Scale, I don't know where I want to put it around here. I would like to have it as an operating display, but it does take up a fair amount of space, so I need to figure that out. But yeah, I think uh, this looks a lot better than it did before, and it's going to be a lot easier to work on stuff now. I don't have to crouch down to the floor every time, you know, I want to work on the N-Scale stuff. So yeah, that's kind of the story there. Uh, now for the uh, Cincinnati stuff. A few uh, months ago, I announced that I was building a model of the Forest Fair Mall in Cincinnati, Ohio. Pretty notorious place based on what ended up happening. But uh, anyways, I've been kind of working on making my own rendition of the place. And uh, this is my prototype right here. So I started kind of building up the inside. This is not a perfect model of the real thing by any means, but it shares a lot in common. So I don't know if I want to change this up or not. I find the proportions are a little off, but uh, that's what I got so far. And uh, I decided to use this space on the outside to build a bit of a parking garage. And I think it looks pretty nice. I mean, it needs to be painted and everything, but I think it will be a good, uh, good start. This is not gonna be uh, the actual structure too. When I build the real thing, I'm probably gonna use uh, styrofoam like I did with the Hershey's factory, just cause I think it will last a little longer, but um, I think other than the proportions in the middle, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. 
Norman Corey, hello Harrison, I hope all is well. It's nice to see you running some trains. When are you going to show your grandmother her train? Uh, you got it fixed up. Uh, I, I really hope this week. Uh, unfortunately, my family all got really sick uh, the day of her birthday, so uh, we weren't able to have her over. But um, yeah, we're gonna do some sort of a, a birthday dinner for her. Um, you know, because we kind of took a rain check on that night. And uh, yeah, I want to show her her childhood train. Got, no, no COVID and just got some sort of flu. I don't know. It, we've just been sick a lot lately. I don't know why. Sean H., uh, my son Clayton and I are catching another stream. We went to the New York Central Train Museum in Elkhart, Indiana and picked up some rolling stock from Michael's Trains in Joshin on our way home. Well, that sounds like a really fun trip. Thank you so much for the super chat. Hey Harrison, I recently created my own channel and you are my inspiration. I've had the channel for two days now and only ha already have 1.3k views, so I just want to say thanks. Well, congratulations. That's uh, quite the accomplishment for two days. I tell you what, I didn't get anywhere near that in the first few days of uh, this channel's operation. Hey, SMT, real quick, I was going to hook up two locomotives together. Should I do DCC or get a dummy unit? Well, it's either or. I mean, if you're running short trains, a, a dummy unit is a, a much cheaper and simpler option. But uh, if you want some pulling capacity, go with DCC because then you can actually, you know, uh, speed match the two units or buy two identical DC locomotives. Because if they run roughly the same speed, it will probably be okay, even if you're running DC. Forest Fair Mall had some small roller coasters inside too. There was a roller coaster fanatic. I've been there. Yeah, that was in, uh, I think it was called Wonder Park. They had two amusement parks in that mall at one point. They had, um, yeah, what was that? Time Out on the Court, and then, yeah, later the Wonder Park, which I think kind of replaced it. Hi, everybody. How's it going today? I'm new here. Uh, my name's Jeffrey. I love trains. Me and my wife and family love trains, too. Well, uh, welcome to the stream, uh, Jeffrey. I just started model railroading. Do you have any tips as a pro model railroader? Well, I wouldn't consider myself a pro, but um, one thing I'll say is just, uh, if you're building your first layout, like make a list of what you want. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, just don't be afraid to buy what you want. There's a lot of people out there who are gonna tell you it's a good idea to pick uh, a location to model your railroad after and uh, an era like do you want to run it in the 50s where you have steam and stuff and if you if you care about history um and that side of the hobby it can be a lot of fun but uh i think there's some other people that just want to run trains so yeah figure out what you want in the hobby and then uh get that out of it also don't be discouraged if things don't work right because uh the hobby is a trial and error sort of thing and I find when you put things together the first time, there's a fine chance they won't work perfectly. So um, that's everybody's experience as far as I've heard. It's definitely been mine, so don't be uh, discouraged, that's for sure. Hey, SMT, I caught the CSX 1982 Seaboard System Unit a few days ago through Columbus, Ohio. That's cool. That's one of their new uh, heritage units. Do you still get mailed boxes of trains? For sure. Um, I'm planning on doing a new uh, unboxing this week. I've just been uh, behind a little bit, but um, I think this next unboxing might be the biggest one that's ever been done. All of those boxes right there, all of that should be uh, on the slate. Do you think a River Rossi big boy with a box for 150 or 170 is a good price? If it runs, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I see those things going on eBay um, for about 250 So if it runs fine, yeah, but I'd, I'd go for it. Hey, SMT, I just saw the video on the Elmer Train Show, and I loved it. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That was a, a terrific show. It's kind of funny. While I was editing that video, I was actually at another train show, which is the OVAR Flea Market, and uh, that was another good show. I really can't wait to uh, get that video out the door. 
Landon Avery, I've been watching the channel since 100,000 subscribers. Well, thanks for sticking around. Just have fun, it's what the hobby's about. Exactly, uh, Norm. It's like, uh, I don't know, I think some people get so caught up with uh, trying to build the most realistic layout out there, they kind of forget that the point of the hobby is to enjoy it. If you're enjoying the hobby, you're doing it right. It doesn't matter uh, if your layout looks like junk or, you know, it looks dead on realistic. Are you able to buy cork roadbed up there? It's really hard to come by down here in the States. Uh, yeah, there's no shortage of it. It's actually made from an American manufacturer. I think it's called Midwest Cork. Um, you can look online. You should be able to order it if you can't buy it locally. If you can't uh, find any, I think you can buy quarter inch sheets of cork at the hardware store and then you can take an X-Acto knife and cut them at an angle. I mean, it's, it's the same material. It's gonna take a lot of time, but if uh, you really can't source it, gotta do what you gotta do. Hey, SMT, I'm new to model railroading. I wanted to ask you, what's the best place to get locomotives and rolling stock? Well, if you want my uh, detailed um, explanation, I actually made a video a few weeks ago called the best places to buy model trains. But um, in short, there's not really one particular place that's best to buy model trains. They all have their pros and cons. My personal favorites are um, brick and mortar train shops and train shows. I still find brick and mortar shops have better prices than eBay. Um, but eBay is always an option if you're willing to pay a little bit more. Definitely is one of the most convenient out there. Hey, SMT, I just got two European locomotives and some cars for 28 US dollars, and I got one running. Sounds like fun. My chat seems to not be appearing. Do you know why? Well, there's a speed limiter on the chat, so you can only post one message every 60 seconds, so maybe that's what's going on. Anyways, I did get a request for an FP45. I'm going to look for one that has a horn hook coupler. There's one for uh, the people in either Baltimore or Ohio. Quite happy with how this lifelike locomotive has been running. Before the live stream started, I was trying to get it to pull these cars, and when I first started it, it was just struggling, and yeah, now it's actually even running half decent even at the lower speeds. It's amazing when you just run these things, how quick it... Yeah, I mean, you can already kind of see how, how shiny the wheels are. I want to buy trains off eBay. Is there any tips you can give me to make sure it's not a scam? I don't find that most sellers on eBay will outright scam you, um, but... What you really need to be careful for is that they don't mislead you because sometimes people will use language like it's not tested but appears to be in good condition or something like that. That probably means they did test it and it didn't run and they're just pretend they're playing dumb. So um, make, make sure that they actually write somewhere that it is in working order um, because it, eBay does have um, recourse. You know, if you get sent a bad product, you can file a claim. Uh, therefore, a lot of sellers usually don't really have a good incentive to scam you. So, um, but yeah, just, just be really careful to make sure that they specifically say it's in working order. If they don't mention that or they avoid your questions, um, find something else. What is one of the easiest locomotives to fix? The old uh, lifelike pancake drives. 
the ones that have the brass wheels, the plastic ones on the back and the plastic windows. Uh, these are pretty easy to work on. If you're a beginner, you can find these cheap and they're not too difficult. Um, Bachman made a very similar model. Those are not super difficult to work on, but they have resin over the uh, screws and so on. So they're slightly more difficult because of that. I think they didn't want people opening the locomotives up and messing around with them. That's probably why they did that. Hmm, coupler situation on this engine's not ideal, but I'm gonna try to run it anyway. I think it's gonna disconnect. Yeah, that's about what I expected. Eh, let's go find something else, because something's not right. That one's a little bit too low. Do you have any other hobbies? Um, yeah, I like working on old out outboard motors, which also translates to boats. Um, yeah, outboard motors, uh, classic cars. Uh, some other kind of just odds and ends sort of hobbies. Bit of horseback riding. How much do they cost usually? Oh, the old life lakes um, are only worth about $20. But I mean, if you're buying one with the intention of disassembling it, I would just buy one that's already broken. Then, you know, you don't really have to worry about it. And you can find those for $5. Okay, that's more like it. Hopefully this one will start. What was the first locomotive that you can remember? Uh, in, in terms of real locomotives, it would be the uh, Swedish H2 steam locomotive. I saw that engine many times as a kid. In terms of model trains, um, I, I still have uh, my entire original collection because I started off with three or so locomotives, uh, all of which still work too, so. Ooh, it's struggling. Might have to get rid of some cars. <laughs> oh, here we go. It's starting to get some traction. Are there any good beginner locomotives? I'd recommend the Walters Trainline GP15s, or really, really any Walters Trainline locomotives. I find they're pretty good value for your money. I mean, they're still about, I think, $80 or something, so they're not giving them away. But for the money, I feel like, uh, you know, they got LED lighting, they've got directional lighting, they're all-wheel drive, um, built a little bit better than the Bachmans. Is your layout lit? As in, do we know your buildings have lights? We all know the layout is lit. Yes, the layout is uh, definitely lit. Let me see if I can get it to work here. FYI, I listened to him about buying old models, the old lifelike Tycos, etc. If you can find them on Evil Bay, can charge you through the nose. Yes, absolutely. Like. Uh, an old Tyco or lifelike locomotive at a train show will run you $20 at most. Most of the time it's like $5, $10. On eBay they can be like 50 bucks. It's insane.
suck. Can you do some foamer style shots like shouting and screaming and whatnot? Uh, leave that to that guy uh, who's always shouting about the Penn Central. I don't know what his name is. There, I'm sure there are people in the community who know who I'm talking about. He's that guy, he stands beside the railroad and he just starts like throwing a bit of a fit over different trains. It's really funny. I wish I, uh, I wish I knew the name of his channel. He's kind of a meme in the community. I'm always seeing uh, posts about him. Run the cheapest engine you've bought with the most expensive rolling stock. Okay, we can make that happen. So this is the cheapest engine I've bought in working order. It was $3. I've bought engines for less than this but most of the time they had significant issues, whereas this one really just needed some wheel cleaning. Um, anyway, a lot of this rolling stock is basically the most expensive I own. A lot of these are Rapido cars I just got a few months ago, so um, I think that would qualify. Uh-oh. <laughs> some people on eBay charge 150 for a broken Bachman. I actually saw one today. Yeah, I, I see that all the time, especially the old Bachman steam engines. The unfortunate thing with the old Bachman steam engines is that the old ones are, are kind of junk, like they weren't very well made, and, but they look exactly like their modern counterparts, like you, you have to know. So I feel like what happens is a lot of beginners think that they've found a good deal. They think they've found the same engine at a lower price. In reality, they don't know it's a first gen and is riddled with problems. Because otherwise, I don't know why people would be paying so much for them. I'm going to be curious to see if this engine has enough um, jam to actually pull this train. I just noticed it's missing a traction tire, so this is going to be a push for it, but... We're going to send it anyhow. At least it couples up right. <laughs> Sounds like a coffee grinder, but it's pulling it. Is Bachman still in business? Yeah, they are. Controller Packers 2, welcome. When are you gonna do the budget layout video you mentioned previously? Probably within the next few months. Um, before that happens, I'm going to be building another layout for my friend Matthew's son. Um, and that's going to be a compact layout, so that's going to be its own series. But once I get that done, I'll certainly start the uh, budget series. Is Lifelike still in business? Uh, not really. Um, they were bought out by Walters in 2005. And then Walters kind of kept the name alive, so they were still continuing to manufacture and sell all of Lifelike's train sets and stuff. But I think in 2016, uh, they deep-sixed the brand and uh, they quit producing them. It, it is, in essence, still around because Walters still makes Proto, which was Lifelike as well. But I think they call it Walters Proto instead of Lifelike Proto. In fact, he took my suggestion. I try, but uh, I'm impressed. This engine was pulling the same amount of cars as this thing, and this one has all of its traction tires. So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of impressive. Just goes to show you sometimes uh, it's not all about the money. It makes the uh, engine worthwhile. Uh, 
it smells terribly of ozone and it's a little warm, but <laughs> gotta give credit where credit is due. Do you still have the daylight? Uh, yeah, yeah, we got, we got the brass one, the old Bachman one. Down there is the uh, Freedom Train. My goal at this point with the daylights is to collect a lot. I want to get the BNSF daylight. Well, I don't really know if that counts as the daylight, but the BNSF GS4. Um, yeah, there's the War Baby, so I still need to find that one. I did find the Western Pacific model. That's on its way. But uh, I've got both the classic ones. Harrison, I'm going to go live tomorrow. Any tips? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I <laughs> I didn't... I, I kind of just jumped in when I did my first live stream and just started it up. You, know, you get kind of used to it. I have an NJT Metro North F40 by life like it still runs. Well, that's good to hear. Um... I, I'm a huge fan of the old life likes. Sorry I got uh, sidetracked too. I think I said I was going to show everybody the lights. I plugged in the controller, but I forgot to show it. So uh, we got one light there. The store has lights. All of these have lights. Maybe if I actually shut off some of the basement lights, you could see what I'm talking about here. Yeah, so you can kind of see it a little bit better now. So to answer your question, uh, the house is lit. Uh, basically all of Main Street is uh, has lighting. Some of the other buildings do. I still need to add lighting to this section as well as that one over there. But um, yeah, this actually dates back to my very first layout. It's all the same wiring. SMT, what's the longest time you spent rail fanning on one trip approximately? I just broke my record last Tuesday with a three-hour a three hour trip to see a UP heritage unit. Three-and-a-half-hour trip. I've, I feel like I've probably done a total of five hours. Um, last summer, the local uh, model railroading community, we all met up at the yard at Smith Falls and uh, actually had a barbecue by the train yard. There's Mark from Eminem Rails, uh, DC Forever, that guy Doug. I don't know if he's in here right now, but a bun bunch of different people from the community. And uh, yeah, we were out there all day watching trains. So we had to have been out there for at least five hours, which was a lot of fun. So about that. And you run an old Atherin engine. Oh, for sure. Let me just uh, find one here. There was one I was working on recently. I think it was the New Haven unit. Yes. What time is it in Canada? It's 9.47. Well, that's on this side of the country. Uh, Canada, I think, has three time zones. I wonder if you collect model railroad or magazines. Uh, I have a pile of them from when I was subscribed to model railroader. I haven't been for probably 10 years, but I, I still have all the old ones. Uh, what I used to love, though, is my uh, Uncle Bill. He has a a farm and he has this like tower at the farm and uh, he's he's a train guy as well and one day one of his buddies went to the dump and he found about a pallet of old model railroader magazines so he took them all and he filled this tower with them so whenever I'd go up to his farm 
I'd go through them all and there were you know model railroading magazines dating back to I don't know the 70s 80s 90s and uh, I always found it fascinating uh, seeing how the layouts used to look SMT, please read if you missed it. A wild SD70 has appeared. What do you do? I don't know. Do you have all the Spirit of 76 locomotives? I have all the Tyco Spirit of 76 locomotives. I thought I had uh, a lot of the other brands' versions as well, but recently at a train show, I found another one, but uh, I'm going to leave that as a surprise for the uh, next video. Coupled right up on the first try. I think I, I just saw David's EDG scale in here. This was a locomotive he uh, sent in a couple of years ago and still running strong. Can you run the Montana Rail Link locomotive? Yeah, sure. Harrison, will you ever get a Thomas the Tank engine and run it on your layout? What are your thoughts on them? Well, I have nothing against Thomas. I loved the show as a kid, but uh, I don't really feel the need to collect any of the HO scale models. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just not really interested in it. Harrison, please read Penn Central Baby. You can count on us. The guy's name is Rod Rodney Kantorski. Probably not reading that right, but uh, can you run something Penn Central? Yeah, sure. Let me get the uh, Montana Rail Link out first, though. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. I definitely have a Penn Central locomotive. I, I don't know where it is these days, but it's an old lifelike. It's probably on the second shelf. Yeah, there it is. This is actually a first generation lifelike, so this is based on an old Varney drive. Not the greatest models, these gears were kind of known for stripping out, but other than that, they're pretty solid. SMT, what LED would I use to put in locomotives? Um, it's not really a right or wrong one. Probably uh, something that works on 12 volts. I mean, you could add resistors depending on what your uses are. To tell you the truth, I haven't added too many LEDs to my locomotives. I usually just use uh, 12 volt incandescent bulbs because you don't need to worry about resistors or anything like that. They're just quite straightforward, but... Um, I don't, there's probably somebody in the chat that can answer that question a lot better. What's a good LED and what's a good resistor to go with it? Uh, do you have any rare ancient trains you basically owned? Well, I've got my grandmother's 1951 Hiawatha and that's still running. But I've got a, I've got a few uh, that date back a bit. I've got this one right here. Which may or may not date back to 1939. Still don't know exactly when it was made, but it's possibly the oldest one in the collection. We see the end scale layout. Sure, let me just uh, swap some of these locomotives out here. I'm hoping this will be able to hook up to the train. The coupler is definitely missing its spring, so it's going to be interesting.
you have anything from Genesee in Wyoming or anything they own? Uh, yeah, I've got a, I think it's a GP38 with the Quebec and Gatineau paint scheme. How many locomotives do you have? About 500. Did you forget the Montana railing locomotive? No, no, it's over on the bench. I'm just setting this one up because I think it's going to be trickier. Okay, it actually coupled up the first time. Let's see if it stays that way. I don't even know if this engine's strong enough. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Okay, well, the lights are on, but no one's home. Give it a little more voltage here. Hopefully nothing burns up. Uh-oh. Something's burning up. Hmm. Seems like it was seized. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. I think this problem with this thing is I just haven't run it in a long time. Do the tracks on the street work? Uh, they do in theory. I don't think they're wired at the moment, but um, yeah, they, they definitely can. And to answer the previous question on LED, uh, Norm says Amazon has three millimeter warm LED lights. With a thousand ohm resistor already on the wires, so they work well for replacing regular light bulbs. Okay, well, there you go. That's a great answer. Harrison, have you seen the YouTube video, Telago versus Superliner? A hundred percent. That video was my childhood. I watched that thing so many times as a kid. I loved that video. The only thing that bugged me about it is it didn't have a conclusive end. It's, I think it's been probably, uh, what, 15 plus years and we still don't know which engine's quicker. I just remember as a kid, I couldn't believe how big that layout was. Like, it just went on from section to section to section. It must be part of some big club. My son's a huge fan of BNSF. Can you run a BNSF engine? Yeah, sure, we can make that happen. I saw a video on the Chinese engine and an earlier video on the British locomotive. Do you have any other locomotives from other countries? Yeah, I've got some locomotives from Australia, some from Germany. All around the world, there's, well, Ireland now. But uh, yeah, I've got locomotives from all over the place. Couple from uh, Mexico. They need to do an updated version of the Telago video with chargers. That would be pretty cool. Could be like this thing. Every 15 years, they make an updated version.
I don't know if the uh, BNSF engine can operate on the inner corners of this layout, but I'm going to try to run it. Um, Sonic 519, do you have any Allegheny steam locomotives? So can you do a tug of war? I don't think I do have any uh, Alleghenies, no. Certainly one I'd like to get. I saw one at the uh, train show recently. Thanks for the uh, super chat there. What's a recently rare engine you've added to your collection? Probably the uh, Canadian National Northern engine. Those are really hard to find. Have you seen the video, my rusty Chevrolet? Yeah, I've seen that before, it's funny. I kind of relate, because I have an old Oldsmobile. It's not that rusty, but yeah, an Oldsmobile is basically a Chevy, so kind of kind of fits. Hey, big props to Caddo. It handles the 15 radius curves. SMT, do you own a Union Pacific 844? Uh, no, I don't have that model. Can you get an FP45? Uh... Uh, I thought this was an FP-45. Norm Corey, I love the Allegheny home-built steam locomotive. Yeah, if, uh, and if you haven't seen it, Norm actually built his own uh, Allegheny steam locomotive out of a bunch of River Rossi parts. Pretty wild project. your biggest streamlined steam locomotive i think that that would be the uh, t1 that or the daylight i think the t1 is a little bit longer When are we going to be making a model railroad on a budget? Within the next few months. I uh, was saying earlier I've got another project, which is building a compact layout, because that's uh, going to a friend of mine's son, and I want to get that done quicker. But um, the budget layout, I, I really intend to get it done this year. The layout videos shouldn't take as long as the last ones, just because the scale of the project's a lot smaller. You know, the compact layout, I think, is going to be on about a 5 by 3 um, surface, so that's going to be way smaller than a 4 by 8 and I suspect the budget layout is probably going to be a 4x6 or something similar to that in order to help reduce costs. But um, I I'm really excited because back when I built this layout, uh, this whole section right here, it used to be separate. Um, you know, I, I hardly had like 100 bucks in my bank account, and I, I really wanted to build this layout. I, you know, found this design, and I would modified it, and I was like, okay. And uh, between buying junk track and using scrap wood as the surface to build it on and building it out of cardboard and stuff. I think really the only cost was like some adhesives and uh, paints and things like that. So this whole layout, this whole section here costs like somewhere between 50 to 100 bucks. It was a really cheap layout. So if I can do it with this, it's got to be possible to do, to do something similar. But yeah, I want to see if I can build another layout for $50 or at least under a hundred. So I get so many comments from people saying, oh, I really want to get into the hobby, but it's so expensive. And uh, I totally get that. So there are ways you can build, build stuff on the cheap. T1 
Did you ever see The Sopranos with the mob guy hitting up a hobby shop? No, I never saw that. I have watched some of The Sopranos, but uh, I haven't seen that. I'll have to look that up later. I love it when uh, railroad stuff gets into mainstream shows. Love the uh, scene from Breaking Bad where they go robbing a train. That was really well done. Hey, SMT, I was cleaning out my grandparents' house and I found a strange looking box with Japanese bullet trains. Should I trust the little locomotives? Uh, well, I mean, I'd be careful throwing them on the track because if they've been sitting for a long time, you know, they might be seized. So if you give them power and they don't turn, don't keep feeding them power. You'll burn out the motor. But um, yeah, otherwise, go ahead, test them out. Maybe they'll run. Have you ever heard of Foxy Craft? Yeah, I've seen some of uh, Foxy Craft's videos. I was watching his older... Um, his Minecraft content years ago. Okay, let me find a CSX locomotive. I fixed one up recently. It can't be too far away. Actually, it's over in the yard. That's why I can't find it. It's actually Crafty Foxy. <laughs> Dyslexia. I always get stuff backwards. My grandparents have an old Lionel Pennsylvania Railroad engine. It's pretty cool. Harrison, please read. Uh, do you know how I can send my Union Pacific GP32? I want to see it running on the layout. Well, I don't do repairs that uh, involve uh, shipment anymore, but if you want to send me an email, like if you need advice on repairs, I'd be happy to help you. There was a pretty nice O-scale layout in the Garfield movie from 2004. Yeah, there's a good O-scale layout. There's also a great train scene from the uh, Garfield movie. I loved that as a kid. When are you coming to the States again and where are you going? Uh, at some point this summer, I'll probably make my way down to uh, Maine. Well, we'll see. Thinking about maybe doing some kind of road trip. Have you ever watched Carter H? Yeah, I've seen some of Carter H's videos. Uh, he was actually, I don't know if he still watches the channel, but uh, he was a subscriber to this channel pretty early on. How can I mail you a package to unbox? Thinking of sending you some models that I have. Uh, I have a DC Montana Rail Link SD40-2 with some brass parts. It's an Atherin Blue Box. I have a video on the channel with the uh, post office box. I think the video is called I Got a P.O. Box. So if you go in the uh, description of that video, all the information is right there. DB Tech, welcome. Do you have an Instagram? Yep. It's uh, linked in on the uh, channel page. I don't know why this disconnected. Hi, Harrison. Have you ever tried to fix an old River Aussie motor, the kind that is riveted and closed with the bent metal tabs? It seems like the only way is inside is to drill out the rivets. Um, I've never opened one, no, but uh, yeah, that I think would be the only way to open it up. You could probably replace the rivets with uh, screws, but... Yeah, if you can avoid opening it, that would probably be best because trying to get one of those back together might be a little bit tricky. My, hello, my name is Mand. I'd like to see some British Railway uh, motives. Like some LNER. 
Well, I'll have a look. I did do a repair on a British steam engine about a year ago. Maybe I could try to run that. Skipping super chaps. Did I actually miss one? Let me see here. You're right, I did. Uh, can you run a CSX locomotive? Okay, so I did do that one. Um, week five of asking if you fixed the Challenger. Uh, no, I, I haven't worked on the Challenger yet. That is probably going to be a pretty big project. I mean, I am intent to get it done at some point, but somebody did a lot of weird work on that locomotive, and uh, I don't know. I just don't know if I want to take something on. I'll, I'll get it done eventually. There's no doubt about it. Hey, SMT, I watched your video on Atlas Plastic Rail Joiners and bought a pack of them from Hobby Town. I added them to my layout, so thanks for the idea. Well, no problem. Okay, I'm definitely behind on the chat. These are all old messages. Something weird happened. Can you run the go cab forward? I guess I could try. I'd have to sidetrack the uh, freight train somehow. How would I do that? I'll just flip the two switches and I'll try to run the go train on the outer circuit. I don't know how this is going to go, but I'll try it anyhow. And then I'll try to run some kind of British locomotive. Do you know where your sister and girlfriend are going to open the box? Probably within the next month. Uh, it's just tricky uh, getting them both here at the same time because they both are pretty busy people. Have you ever watched Virtual Rail Fan? I used to uh, back in the day. Nice food trucks. They are nice food trucks. Kind person sent them. Sometimes if you open those motors, the actual magnet is glued to the side pieces of metal and will come apart, so be careful. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, thanks for sharing that, uh, Norm. Have you heard of the railroad Huron and Eastern? It rings a bell, but I don't want to say I do because I'm not sure. SMT, do you recall where this one video on your channel years ago where you rode that hand car in the abandoned rail line was located? That was a video in Wakefield. I don't know if I kept that video up or not. A lot of people getting angry, I don't know, saying I was trespassing or something. This wasn't true, but... Yeah. Gonna be tricky getting these out. I love the Waffle House restaurant. Yeah, I think this is gonna be its new home. It used to be where the mall is, but obviously it needs to be relocated. So I think it fits in this area pretty well. Whatever is squeaking is really squeaking now. Yeah, I think a few of those bearings could probably use a bit of oil.
apologize for this taking so long. All the uh, cars were derailed in the tunnel. Can we see the Hershey's factory? Yeah, sure. It hasn't changed a whole lot since its uh, completion. I did add a couple of new cars on, but uh, that's about it. Do you have any trains from Mexico? Yeah, I've got a switcher engine from Mexico. It's an old uh, proto engine of some kind. What model of locomotive should I stay away from? The early Bachmann steam locomotives would be an obvious choice. Um, the lifelike tea kettle. What else? The power. If you want reliability, I wouldn't buy any Tyco Power Torques. If you want something to mess around with, you can find the Tyco Power Torques pretty cheap, but they're not the most sound locomotives, in my opinion. One of these uh, cars right here is brand new. This has been a four car consist for. About 15 years, but uh, at the most recent train show I went to, there was a guy and he was selling one of these cars for $20, which is quite remarkable because the uh, buy levels usually go for like $100, $150 a piece. They're way overpriced. So yeah, for 20 bucks, I was pretty happy with that. What's your opinion on Walter's Mainline? I like uh, Walter's Mainline. Hey, Herson, I thought I'd stop by for a moment. I wanted to ask you about something. Give me a moment to put the question together. Okay. Model Train Central, welcome. Galaxy would like to know if you still have the Blue Goose. Yep, still got the Blue Goose. He's doing some work on it a couple of months ago. Okay, I think this thing is finally good to go. Curious to see how this works. I was able to get the four car consist through the mountain layout, but we're working with a bit of a larger train, which can add its own problems, so... Let's just give it a lot of power and hope nothing bad happens. So far, so good. And, uh, yeah. Have you ever seen the opening to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? There's a great HO town scene with a trolley. I'm trying to recreate it. I thought it was a uh, O or G scale trolley, but uh, it's it's been so long I can't really remember. Epic fail cam. Yeah, no kidding. Seems to be some issues with the tunnels. Well, this is a 18 radius curve right here, so... I should, may, I might try backing the train out. That could create its own issues too, but I mean, it's already derailed, so there's not really much to lose in my opinion. 
throw it in good old reverse here. I don't know how far those cars are inside the tunnel, so I'm gonna go slow. I think I just made contact with them. Yeah, okay, there's the back one. It's definitely some stuff derailing over there, but I'm just gonna keep giving it power and hopefully it will rerail itself. Yeah, I think there's been some catastrophic failure. Let's go see. If I remember, you had a model layout. If I remember, I had a model layout under my bed, but I took it out and made it into a four by eight table. Well, it made it part of the way. Should have known better than to run this train through here. Yeah, I don't know how well this is gonna work. I'm gonna deal with it another day. So back to running freight trains. You should start doing HO scale vi uh, fail videos like SCL 3618. It's not a bad idea. I'm sure with all the live streams over the years and derailments that have happened in my videos, I could probably make like an hour long uh, compilation. Have you heard or seen a railroad called the Plain and City Northern, the PCNC? I found a custom painted SD60M and I have converted it to a grain hopper just like with the same scheme. I can't say I have. I wonder if it was a real railroad or if it was uh, somebody's fictional paint scheme. Keep getting has been hotel meme videos in my recommendations. <laughs> oh no. Chris and Dom, welcome. Hi Harrison, you have a lot of experience through trial and error and people trust your opinion on most things train related. What's your opinion on yourself? Well, I think you put it just about on the head right there. Uh, I've definitely got a lot of experience through trial and error. I mean, I'd be lying if I said this layout works perfectly. Every live stream is a clear indicator that there's a lot of problems, but I try my best to repair things. And when I either find a method that I find works well myself or somebody suggests something that works well, I try to share it with people so they can hopefully uh, improve their own layouts. So it's, uh, I think it's a net positive on the community is what I'm saying. How long have you been a rail fan for? But technically my entire life. I was actually train spotting, you know, seeing the Wakefield train go by as a kid uh, before I even had any locomotives. So yeah, technically I've been a rail fan longer. David from the land down under Harrison. I've been watching your videos for some time. Enjoy the videos. This is the first time commenting. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, watching. Are BC Rail Hoppers rare? They might be. I know BC Rail is not an unknown railroad, but it is definitely a bit more of a niche. It's this one video by this YouTuber named uh, Verbally. Supposedly he paid 
uh, $50,000. Yeah, <laughs> no, they did. some guy paid $50,000 to have the creators of Has Been Hotel make this animation for him. Just crazy. $50,000. You could go and get yourself, like, the nicest car, and they had it on this animation. I mean, to each their own, but... Um, if I had $50,000 in the bank, that's not the first thing I'd uh, spend it on. Thanks for all you do, Harrison. I just started my own channel last week. It's a lot of work, but you really do a great job. Thanks for all your hard work. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Can you run the Erie like a wanna switcher? And I found a video of a porch pirate. Oh, no. Delaware Lackawanna. Yeah, I know the one. Need to replace my track. What's the best budget track I can't use cutters on? Probably uh, Atlas Nickel Silver Snap Track. Can we see the end scale layout? Let me just get this uh, train on the move and then yeah, I'll try to get the end scale layout running. You could buy a real locomotive what would it be uh probably the wakefield train if not that like let's say the budget was infinite i'd get them to rebuild the original hiawatha locomotive i think that that is something that the world needs anyways i don't know if this layout is plugged in but let's see if it will go Nice little lens scale layout. I'm happy it's at least working now. For many months, it's just been sitting there, so. The new snow, I think it looks a lot better too. We see the smallest engine. Uh, yeah. I believe this right here would be the smallest locomotive I own. I mean, I've got some high rails and stuff, which are obviously a little bit smaller, but in terms of engines, this is probably it. I'll try to run it on the inside circuit here. Doesn't want to start. It's probably a bad wire in there that I just need to fix. Sound the horn over the crossing. Okay, it's a bit late on that one.
With your AC Gilbert AF steamers, how do you get access to the axles? I think the wheels were pressed in. Yeah, I think the wheels were all uh, pressed in, so the chassis, they probably drilled those holes out. I'd have to look at it again, but I don't, I don't recall there being a way to open that up. Two long, one short. There's a name for that combination. I can't remember what it is, but it's, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'll try to see if I can get it a little more accurate this time. I didn't, it didn't sound the last time. Oh well. You have a G.I. Joe train? Uh, no, I don't have that set. I can't re I think it was the A-Team set. Was it the A-Team? I can't remember. Mark from Eminem. No, it was MASH. I did a MASH train. It was Mark from Eminem Rails' locomotive, and uh, he had me do some repairs on it. So there's a video on my channel of that locomotive, but um, I don't actually have one in the collection. your birthday next week yeah it's in about a week what's your favorite state to go on vacation uh i think maine i mean i've, I've been to maine just about every year of my life the only year i didn't get to go down was uh 2020 for obvious reasons the second would probably be uh florida or michigan Pennsylvania was pretty cool. I really liked uh, stopping by there. I, like, I liked Ohio a lot, too. Do you think I should switch my layout to Easy Track? Uh, easy Track to Atlas Track, because I have some laying around. If you're willing to put in the time to switch it over, it might pay off in the long run. I mean, you know, nickel silver easy track is okay. At least the road bed lines up pretty well, but I just find in the long run, the joiners wear out and you start to have problems. Michael Belts, my birthday's today. Well, happy birthday. I'm from New Jersey and a lot of Quebecois vacation here. Have you ever been? I've been to New Jersey um, going to New York, but I've, I've never actually stayed in New Jersey before. How's Nerf Cat doing? He's doing fine. He can't really hear anymore and uh, he has a bit of trouble jumping up on the bed and the couch, but uh, he's hanging in there. The thing that's great about him is that, you know, he's, he's, he started kind of biting and stuff and they say only the good die young. So just as long as he keeps doing bad things, he should leave, live, you know, to see at least another day. What's the best website for scale shopping? Uh, as I was saying earlier, there's not really one website I prefer over all the others. Most hobby shops have a, an online uh, aspect though. So if you're looking to get stuff shipped to you cheap, that's probably your best bet. Jack, Jack, welcome. I've got a race going on here. Yeah. yeah let's see if we can square this up a bit. Yeah, there we go. Now the BNSF's catching up. Of 
course, I traveled to Florida from rail to from New York. Wow, that must have been uh, quite a long trip. Have you ever been to Michigan? Yeah, I've been to Michigan before. My uh, dad was born in Ann Arbor, so in uh, 2018 we went on a trip to uh, visit. Well, there were there were two houses they actually had down there, so we went to go vis visit both of those. They're both still standing, and uh, take a trip around the university, taking a football game. It's a really cool place. Okay, here's the question, Harrison. I got a Lionel 1946, number 726 Burke. The motor runs lumpy and struggles to pull even a few cars. Any thoughts on what might be the issue? Hmm, I, I just obviously clean the commutator, clean the wheels, like clean all the contacts and see if that fix it. It sounds to me a little bit like that it might have a bad coil, but um, address all the easy stuff first and then go from there. I think you can buy replacement armatures if it needs a new one. Yeah, SMT, I recently found out that there was a Target train set. Also, happy birthday. I'm going to be doing a birthday live stream. I don't know if I'll do a live stream on my birthday, but there'll probably be uh, another one soon. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I really want to try to do a live stream every week. Uh, the week one before, again, everybody was kind of sick, so that wasn't so much of an option, but I'm going to try to stick to at least one video at some point every week, probably on a weekday. And, uh, yeah, as for the Target train set, I, I think that was a Bachman product from the 90s, if I'm not mistaken. I've definitely seen pictures of those. Uh, do you have any Florida East Coast equipment? Uh, I don't have any Florida East... Well, I have a rail car, um... From Florida East Coast, but um, no locomotives. I did, however, uh, take a trip to the Florida Keys back in February, and so I saw the Seven, seven Mile Bridge, which was the Florida East Coast uh, line all the way up to Key West, which I didn't know a whole lot about until then. I had heard about it in a documentary, but I, didn't, I wasn't aware it was going to be there, so that was pretty cool. So I learned a little bit more about the uh, Florida East Coast and uh, bought uh, a car which is the same as Flagler's, so there'll be a video about that soon. It is a Bachman product from the 90s. Ah! If you have a post-war Lionel, that's pretty much, you pretty much have to take it apart and clean the wheels. That's 70 years old. I have a couple of videos on post-war Lionels. I find they're generally very solid locomotives. The ones from the 50s, I mean, it's all metal construction. Really, the only things that seem to go wrong on those are the E units, and uh, those can be bypassed. So that actually, I should have thought of that. That could be why it's running kind of uneven. Uh-oh. Sorry. One scale layout's having problems. Yeah, it could be a bad E unit. But those can be bypassed. Have you ever been to Cuba? No, never been to Cuba. The closest I think I've ever been was, uh, well, either Key West or Aruba. David, did I not send you a Florida? I think you might be right about that, David. I'll, I'll have to have a look for that. Now that you mention it. Do you have any World War II trains or locomotives from that era? Well, I've got the big boy, which was around then, so yeah, kind of. I live in Scranton, PA. I go to Steamtown all the time, run a Hudson. Okay. Uh, yeah, Steamtown's pretty cool. I went there back in 2017.
Do you still have the Hershey factory? Yep, sure do. Have you ever rode behind a steam locomotive? I've never rode behind a steam locomotive, but I've been in the cab of a live steam locomotive while it was running. Harrison, can or should you run a DC locomotive on a DCC layout? Uh, can you? Yes, it, it's possible. DCC controllers, at least all the ones I'm aware of, have a feature to run DC. Um, is it a very good idea? Well, if it's a modern locomotive and you're keeping it moving, it's probably not an issue, but I wouldn't do it with an older locomotive because the problem with dcc is that you have full voltage in the track 100 percent of the time so if that locomotive is moving slow or it's idling it's still generating the same amount of heat as if it was being given full power but the coils are not being alternated it's whatever coils are energized based on the position of the motor and they're not being air cooled because the motors as they rotate you know they kind of cool themselves so if you do decide to run a locomotive a dc engine on dcc make sure it's a modern one with a, a healthy motor and uh, don't stop it if you stop it take it off the track because if you let it sit there you do run the risk of burning out the motor Okay, um, hey SMT, are you going to do a video of the BNSF dummy unit compared to the powered unit? BNSF dummy unit. Yeah, the one that I sent in recently. Well, I don't know, I, I plan to do a video at some point on converting old uh, dummy units by Atherton into powered models. Harrison, how old is Nerthcat? I hope I spelled his name right. Yeah, you did, um... I don't know specifically how old he is. He was probably born towards the end of 2008, but we don't know because we didn't have him when he was a kitten. You know, he kind of just showed up here and he was clearly a young cat, but yeah, he could be older. I should uh, ask his previous owner one day. She'd probably say, oh yeah, he was born in 2001. <laughs> Who knows? Hey SMT, I just bought three trains off eBay. I've been using your trick to bid on trains and they've mostly worked. I haven't won any yet except for one though. Well, I'm glad it's uh, helped. The cat is older than me. Have you visited the Walter store headquarters in Wisconsin? I have it, and I was supposed to in uh, 2020. Me and my dad had a trip planned down there for that exact reason, actually. And uh, things were just a bit too hectic with the world, as everybody remembers back then. So the trip got canceled, and then we just never bothered to rebook anything. We just wanted to wait for things to settle down. And, uh, yeah, just I, I do eventually want to go down there. Just kind of gotten sidetracked with other things. Do you ever read any of the messages? I try. <laughs> I've also managed to finally start looking into the short circuit problem on my Atherin SD40. I did put tape on the shell to make sure nothing is touching it because the shell is part of the issue. Okay. 
I filter slash sort my eBay search results. It helps a lot. So it's always good to mess around with the tags too, change things up. Like if you're looking for a lot of locomotives, you can write, you know, HO lot of locomotives, but you can also type engines or replace like locomotives with locomotive, but put like huge lot or something like that. It's funny how sometimes like changing one word can, you know, bring you exactly what you're looking for. I also don't know why, but for some reason I've noticed recently that engines um, seems to be a bit better at finding lots of locomotives. I don't know why that tag brings up better results, but this is something I've seen. How long did it take for you to make your layout? It's been an ongoing project for, oh boy, it's 2007. How many years ago is that now? It's got to be over about 15, 16 years. About, I'm going to say 16 years at least. But it doesn't take 16 years to build a layout. Like the layout build series, I think that that one took about six months. So if you have the time, you can put things together pretty fast. But the thing that with this layout is, you know, I'd build a section, then it would get redone and it was expanded. Like a lot changed over the years. Harrison, if I want my layout to look like yours, where there's a main line and an inner track, am I gonna need two different controllers for each separate track? Uh, no, you don't need two controllers. I've set it up that way just cause since I'm usually running separate trains on each track, it just kind of makes more sense. But um, the way this layout is wired is so that uh, this track, the inner track feeds off this controller, the outer track feeds off these two controllers. But let's say I want to run a train from the outer track to the inner track. You can't just run a train from one controller to another without anything in between them. So what I did was I wired it so that if I flip this switch right here, you see how they both start to run off the same controller? So what this means is if I want to transfer tracks, it's all the same power and you don't need to worry about shorting the two controllers against each other. So you could wire something up like that, or you could just wire it off a single controller like this and it will work just fine. But you do lose the uh, multiple controls, so it's up to you. Can you post a video on how to wire it? Uh, yeah, I can definitely do that. I'm gonna, I ordered some more double pull, double throw switches, and I'm also gonna do a video on how to wire up a DCC controller with a DC controller. It is possible to wire them both separately so you can toggle, which is helpful. Sometimes people put models in different eBay categories. I got a DC slash DCC animated with sound lights tamper for $40 MSRP. Uh, with Walters, it's over $600. Well, that, that's the steal of a century. I should show some day. Show us all the wiring under the table. Well, a lot of the wiring under the table is not that pretty. It's stuff I did when I was a kid, and it's kind of crappy. I'll show some of the recent stuff because it's a bit cleaner, but... So, we've got these two wires here, and there's another two wires which connect to the back of this controller. And we've got some wires that connect to the back of that. So all those feed under here. And if we follow that, they all uh, head here. So... These wires are from the DCC controller. This set is from the um, DC controller here. And then this final set right here connects to the second DCC controller. So what happens is, is if you look right here, you can see um, the two terminals from the DCC controller go to this side. The two terminals from this controller go to this side. And then the two middle terminals feed out and those go directly to the main line. But they also... Uh, have a couple spurs and those spurs connect to this so when you no matter what you do here that power is being fed to this but if you toggle this switch it gets its power from this and then the, the two middle terminals head out onto the main line 
post a schematic. I'll try to put one together. I'll have to go in MS Paint or something and uh, wire it up. It's, I'm, I'm not good at explaining this stuff. If there was a schematic, it would, it would make a lot more sense. Thank you, that's gotta be. Yeah, wiring that up for the first time was uh, interesting. I knew it was possible, but yeah, it took a, a long time to figure that out. In your opinion, what do you think is the best way to store lots of locomotives and spare parts for them? Uh, for spare parts, I've just got a couple bins over there, but uh, uh, this is my favorite solution for uh, storing locomotives. Some people like to use the uh, longer shelves where they're all stored sideways, and those look nice as well, but I think this is probably a little bit more efficient space-wise, because if I wanted to store all these engines lengthwise, this would probably extend all the way to that wall over there. And uh, it's pretty cost effective too. I mean, I think this shelf was like 50 bucks at Ikea. Yeah, Ikea. And, uh, well, I kind of added some cheap stuff on there too. But, you know, it's kind of perfect. This shelf's almost this, this bookcase, you know, it's almost the same length as these locomotives. So it'll fit almost every size. Test the Challenger, please. I mean, I'll try, but I don't think it's going to go. How many F units do you own? Probably uh, 30. I think uh, the Challenger will be the final engine of the night because we're approaching 11 o'clock and I don't want to keep everybody awake. This is what I'm talking about with like kind of just dodgy stuff. Drive links are all disconnected, so. Let me give it a chance. Harrison, can you show me the new table you purchased? Oh yeah. I'll get the, uh, I promise I'll try to run this. Oh, looks we've got a super chat plastic uh, plus productions. SMT, I love your videos. Thank you. Honestly, I've been working on a lot of model train stuff recently. From experience, I can say repairing stuff successfully feels so good. When you repair something and you get it right the first time, uh, it is a great feeling. And that's why I say serenity. It's a serene moment. What's the brand and model of the transformer you use with your meters? It's an MRC Tech 3 9500 series. Uh, yeah, this is my new unboxing table. I uh, just got this recently because I screwed up my back really badly about a week ago. I saw a chiropractor and she was saying that um, hunching over for let's say a short table is really bad for you. So this is gonna replace the unboxing table. I'm pretty happy with it, it's folding. It's, uh, Feels pretty solid, at least for my purposes, so thumbs up for me. Now on to running the challenge. Big on Halloween, I see. Oh, for sure. Hey, SMT, I'm trying to make an end scale layout. I can't decide on what scenery, either woods or western desert. May you help decide. I mean, I don't want to pick for you, but I don't feel like a lot of people have done like a Western desert. I think that that would make a really unique layout. All right, everyone place your bets. Will it start?
What's your cash app? I'll send you money. Oh, no, I don't have a cash app. Yeah, well, your chiropractors are awesome. Chiropractors are lifesavers. I know there are some bad ones out there, but the one I've had for years, there have been so many times where I've really done some serious damage. And I'm in a great deal of pain. Go over there, walk out feeling like a million bucks. Have you ever heard of the arcade in Attica? I don't think I have, to be honest. Are you making a trip to Larkspur Line anytime soon? I might head down there on my birthday if they're open. We'll see. All right, I'm putting 12 volts in the track so far. I'm not seeing anything. Let me just make sure I'm not in the wrong tab here. I just want to make sure there actually is power in the track. Yeah, there's power. It probably needs to be hooked up to one of the rails. By the way, I wish I could get the uh, camera a little bit lower, but... Just before I started this live stream, I tipped over the tripod and uh, after three solid years of use, it's, uh, it's kaput. My daughter loves your herd of horses. Well, this, this is a reference to the farm. I worked on a farm for a couple years a while back and that's uh, kind of a reference to that. Do you prefer manual or electric points? I mostly just use manual ones. They're pretty uh, solid. Nothing so far. Maybe it needs to come the other rails, eh? Well, it kind of runs. The front wheels are going, but obviously the... Well, the rear wheels are going. The back ones can't turn because they're... Uh, not connected, but sort of runs. <laughs> that is not a happy engine. It's also pulling almost an amp. It's okay. Yeah, it's going to need some work. How many subscribers do you need to go live? Uh, to go live on mobile, you need a thousand subscribers, but unless they've changed things, I'm pretty sure on desktop you can live stream with any number of subscribers. So if you use a, uh, a third party app, I'm pretty sure you can, subs you can uh, do a live stream with under a thousand subscribers. Not a happy runner. Yeah, this this is kind of like awakening that beast from Lord of the Rings. It's, it's it's just not having it. Can you show us the O gauge? Sure, it's uh, not operational at the moment because I need to uh, wire up the controller, but uh, yeah, this is the whole circuit runs back there. I don't know if there's a complete train. There is one right now. It's kind of derailed, but I'll get that sorted out. Well, there we go. We just reached uh, 100 minutes of live streaming. You can go live as long as your account is phone verified on YouTube. I stream on small accounts. 
Okay, I didn't know that. They've definitely changed things because when I started this channel, I think my channel hit a thousand subscribers right as they were bringing in those new rules. So I was aware of them coming into play, but I never worked. I, I don't. I don't think they actually affected this channel. I think it it missed it by a couple months. Any camera recommendations? I'm no expert, but um, for cameras, I have uh, an iPhone 11 Pro. It's a pretty good unit. And then uh, the other camera I use is a Canon ADD. And to tell you the truth, the iPhone actually has better lighting controls. I find that things are brighter and the colors are a little bit more accurate. But one thing that, you know, cell phone cameras just don't have is, you know, this actually has optical zoom, which it just makes the focus a little bit better. So on some of my videos, if things look a bit more crisp, this is why. Can you show us the detail, in detail, the Hershey factory? Uh, yeah, sure. And then I'll uh, finish off the live stream because, as I mentioned, I don't want to keep everyone upstairs awake. Yeah, so. There's some stuff going on. You got the fawns out having a smoke break, some workers... Uh, discussing what dairy they're going to be processing in this section of the plant over here in the office got people taking a bit of a break having their lunch break tourists a lot of these scenes are loosely based on real photos i saw the factory too Notice this is a bit out of place. I went to the Hershey factory in PA. Well, this was the very first Hershey's factory that was built si outside of Pennsylvania. So that factory in Pennsylvania was the famous one which Milton Hershey himself set up. Um, but then when they were starting to expand into Canada, they decided that they needed a Canadian operation and uh, Smith Falls, so the town this used to be located in, was picked because very similar to um, Hershey, Pennsylvania, there was a lot of dairy farms and stuff, so there was tons of milk and uh, a good railway line nearby. So, um, yeah, this was the sister factory. And then they, they ended up building a lot of plants which were quite similar to this one across the United States. So they built another factory in Oakdale, California, there was another plant, I think it might have been in Ohio, I can't be sure, but th there, were, there were two other factories about the same size as this one, which were built in the United States shortly after this, but they resembled the design quite a bit. Challenger needs some love. It definitely does. I'm gonna get working on that at some point this year. Do they have tours at the Hershey factory? Uh, I, I know in Pennsylvania they have tours of a factory. It's not a real factory. It's sort of a mimic. Um, I think they used to have real tours of the factory. As for this one, they had tours right here. They used to have a gift shop and everything, but in uh, 2008, uh, during the financial crisis, they closed this factory down, and uh, it was actually slated for demolition. Um, but then in all, you know, turn of events, right before it got demolished, 
um, a herbs and spices company, we'll call it, bought out the factory. They reopened the tour and everything was going fine. They've now left, but Hershey's is supposed to be coming back. So it's yet to see whether or not they're actually going to return tours to the factory or if they're just going to run it as its own thing. I hope they do, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that's going to turn around. If they do have tours, it's probably going to be similar to what they have in uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania. Me and my buddy used an Atlas Alco RS1 multiple to pull trains. We'd have double Alcos, one or two in the middle, and one pushing. We'd have six or seven on our friend's dad's layout. That's awesome. The Hershey tour was similar to the tour in Jurassic Park, just without the dinosaurs. I've seen, I've never been there, but I've seen uh, videos of it. I suspect if they have tours at this factory again, they're going to do something similar because as much as it's really interesting to have tours of a real factory, I think from a liability standpoint, no company really wants that because they don't, like they were really strict when this factory was open about taking pictures. So it's hard to find pictures online. And I think it's just because, you know, they don't want to have somebody go in there and, and film a, a worker blowing their nose or something you know what i mean so I, I bet if they reopen tours at the hershey factory they're they're gonna water it down somehow and i don't know make make a section of the factory that's just for tourists but it's like kind of a fake version of the tour just like they have in hershey pennsylvania it'll probably be a lot more fun but um i i preferred the original Do you have any chassis system locomotives? I've got a few. These are chassis units here. Or no, those are Chesapeake in Ohio. Hold on a moment. There's chassis. We used to give tours of our plant, at least some parts of the plant. That was back when nuclear was cool. I think they still have something uh, like that up in Deep River, Ontario. What radius is the BNSF train running on? It's running on 15 radius. In this corner, it's a 15, and it's handling it just fine, so... Yeah, big props to Cato. I didn't think they built their locomotives to uh, run on corners that sharp, but no, those those engineers, I tell you what, they, they thought of everything. Anyways, uh, I better finish off the live stream. Thank you all so much for uh, stopping by this evening. I had a lot of fun running trains and chatting with all of you, and I hope you did as well. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll call it a night there. Oh, one last question. What's your favorite heritage unit? Uh... I'll think about this for a minute. Probably the uh, Canadian Pacific. Uh, pr probably the New Haven unit, actually. The New Haven uh, P32s. I don't know. Seen them twice in person. It's a really cool scheme. And I like how it's authentic. They didn't, you know, water it down and put another logo. They made it New Haven. So, got to give credit where credit is due. Anyways, have a uh, great night, everyone.